yeah, well, one thing I want to say, I don't know if you want to edit it after, but comparing yourself to others is the worst thing you can do throughout the bootcamp because there's always going to be that one person who's been doing it for a year and that one person who's been doing it for two weeks. So make sure you're only looking at your results of last week and seeing if you improve. And if you don't, then you're doing something wrong. But if you're always improving, then that's what's important. That daily improvement that you know one more thing than yesterday. It's, it's, I can't stress that enough. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. I just want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor or the hottest startup in Tel Aviv. You might know them as Monday. Dot com. So thanks for keeping the lights on. Thanks for supporting the channel. If you guys don't know what Monday.com is, it's a team management tool, promotes productivity and collaboration. You can use it if it's just through freelancers or a huge corporation. NBC uses it, McDonald's uses it, even Uber uses it. You don't even have to be in the tech space to use it. It's simple, it's intuitive, colorful interface. It connects people to processes, so this is good for, for managers, really appeals to them. You can see who's working on what, how long they've been working on it, the status of it, their deadline, and all those details that you need to run a successful project and have a successful team. So it'd be awesome if you guys check that out. I'll put the link in the description down below. And thanks again, guys, for supporting the channel. So for today's video, who you saw at the very beginning, his name is Michael. He's 19 years old. He's a college dropout. You know, just welcome to another video of a young success story that defies the odds and gets a nice paying salary similar to what a college degree would warrant. Um, all you have to do is buy this course if you want to be just like it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. People think these stories are fake, but, but they're not. Like the hustle, the grind is real. Get it? It's the, it's the, okay. Anyways, he's 19. He dropped out of college for mechanical engineering. He just didn't want to be there. I could super relate to that. Like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. I'm not interested in this. Kind of pushed in by his family. But he dropped out. He went to Lighthouse in Canada. He got a job offer just a couple days ago for 60000 which is pretty awesome. So in this video, he kind of talks about his difficulties, um, like some kind of struggles that he had to get past not necessarily learning like the technicality of code but more like so when he first started code he was telling me that he couldn't focus for more than like an hour a day he would spend three hours on youtube 10 minutes on code three more hours and 10 and, 10, and he did like an hour total work not like one straight hour so he had a real tough time focusing and struggling on things before he'd get demotivated he also kind of had like a hard time taking advice from people when, when people were like, yo, Michael, you can't just work an hour a day and expect to have all this success and glory and fame. You keep watching these success stories, you keep getting mad and upset about it, but you're not doing the work. And he would get mad and upset about it and get on the defensive. And so it kind of took him a while to internalize like, look, I guess I just have to start putting in the work. Another thing that he was struggling with was that he would just kind of give up on things. He wouldn't give enough of a chance to anything that he was learning, and especially in code when every topic is so different from the former topic with all these frameworks, libraries, different languages basically. He wouldn't just give it enough time and he would quit. He snapped out of it and he started putting in four hour days, then eight hour days, and then 12 and 16 hour days, and then right after the code boot camp, he got a job from a React Native app that him and his team built, which I think is pretty awesome. He got to skip the code test entirely for the job that he got because that was part of the demo day at the boot camp that he went to. He displayed his app to an engineering team at a company and another team displayed their app, but he didn't know he was competing with them and they picked the other team and but they already had jobs so they came back and they picked him and that's how he got his job. And so that's what this video is. I hope you enjoy it. Hopefully I've kind of summarized it, TLDR, if you don't watch the whole thing, but I recommend that you do. He's an awesome guy. Congratulations on your job, Michael. Seriously, you are wise. Beyond your years, the same as Wolfie. Yeah, I wasn't as smart as you guys when I was 19, so I'm a little, I'm a little jealous. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe if you did. Be sure to check out Monday.com. Link again is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. So this is Mike. He's 19 from Montreal, Canada, and dropped out of school for mechanical engineering, and then went to boot camp, and now he's got multiple job offers on the table, and he's about to start. And so I thought we'd talk about his story of how that happened and this could all vary because he's in Canada and I've never interviewed someone from Canada before so Michael's your man to give you some tips about Canada and how to find a job and software pay and junior devs and, and all that and are you waiting for more offers to come on the table or are you pretty much sure you're going to take the one that you got? I think I'm going to take the one that I got. It's uh, I have to give an answer by tomorrow. 60k Canadian, pretty solid. Yeah, nice. which is, uh, it's a lot for no CS degree first job. Why did you do mechanical engineering? Was it your parents? Why did you hate it? What was that struggle? Yeah, I, I think uh, everyone else wanted me to do it. 
and it's not something I wanted to do. I had a real big issue with uh, me sitting in the class and just thinking about how bad I don't want to be here and not actually listening. And if I would have listened, who knows? Uh, so when I dropped out, I decided it's finally a chance for me to do what I want to do. So, you, but you stayed at home, like when you went to this boot camp. How did you convince your parents to let you do that after you drop out of college? Because there's a, there's a lot of people in your situation that want to drop out. Hey, man, I'm considering dropping out to go to boot camp. What do you think? And I'm like, I, I can't answer that because I don't know what your parental situation is like. Yeah, they're letting you live at home because you're getting an education, and a lot of people are traditional in that aspect, and that like a boot camp doesn't count as an education that's going to get you anything. So, how did you convince them to let you do that? Was it hard? Yeah, it was, it was a tough ride. Um, at first it was, all right, you're going to go work a job and just stay at that shitty job for the rest of your life. And then I was like, look, you want me to advance? I'm going to have to put some work into it. So I said, give me a month, give me a month and a half, let me work on my stuff, and then I'll find something. And I throughout, I looked at the boot camp, and I'm, you know, it's education, so it looks really good. And it's not just me sitting at home for six months studying. So I was like, let me go to this boot camp. And... That's how it all started. So you said, before we start recording, you said Deco just had bad reviews. Le Wagon was uh, French, and that's not your main language. Uh, yeah. You'd rather do it in English, so you chose Lighthouse. How long was Lighthouse? It was 11 weeks. 11 so weeks long? It's really 10 weeks, but you take a week break, um, and you do computer science at home. So they give you a little halfway break. How long were the days there? You said 12 hours, but after talking with you more, it seems like your typical nine to five full-time three month code boot camp. but you, obviously you did more. You stayed like 12, 14 hours. You came in on days that they were technically not teaching. They were closed. You just came to work, 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 work. Uh, what, was, what was your average day like? So probably wake up at around 7.30, get there by eight if I can, maybe 8.30, and then I got a good hour in the morning to go and work on something, so usually I just work in my portfolio, and then I would go into the day, finish all my stretch work if I can, if not, just work on the normal day stuff, and when everyone would leave, I would go and keep working on that project I started in the morning, so one day I made a phaser game using phaser JS, and another day I was in the portfolio, just trying to get, take advantage of the time I had. You said you did like... I guess you did like a project every week, but you had like five or six significant projects that you did. What were those? What were the main technologies on that? We did a project using React Native, which was our final project. We used React Native, we used um, Postgres database. We set up our Node app because we didn't really want to touch Rails. It seemed like too much at once. So what was the toughest thing about bootcamp? You, you go from traditional college, mechanical engineering, sitting in the class, not paying attention, to having to be fully engaged 12 hours a day. How do you go from uh, being like zoned out to totally focused on code? What was that transition like? How hard did you have to force yourself to do that? Did you delete all your games? Did you like, what was that like? Yeah, I'll start off where, when I really started programming, I started off with JavaScript and jumped straight into that. And the first two weeks, I would say, I think I did about two hours of work just because I was still a really bad student, so I'd wake up early, I would sit down, and then I'd pull up a YouTube video, and like, hey, look, and just stay there for a couple hours, and then come back for 10 minutes, do some code, go back, just to, you know, procrastinating all day. And then I realized I'm not gonna go anywhere with that, that kind of uh, work ethic. So I started working on um, being consistent, which I still to today think is the biggest key to anything. So instead of doing trying to go hard on one day and do like 10 hours. I was doing just an hour a day. The next week I turned that to four hours a day and just kept on going. And then at one point it was like 12 hours a day. And I was like, look, I made it. Which for most people is really easy. They can do it. But for me, it was really hard. So if you were to go back in time and give yourself some hints and tips or tell yourself to do something different, would you have skipped college? Would you have done self-taught with everything? you? I mean, it's easy to say, yeah, I'd be self-taught now. Of course you would, right? I would say try stuff out and then make up your mind not just what does that mean so don't just try something for five minutes and then put it down what Give what it a real try you mean like a career choice i mean anything i mean jumping into a calculus class after five minutes and not understanding what's going on i would just be like okay i don't want to do this anymore i hate it you know so mm -hmm. to, to stop 
just saying I hate it because I can't do it or it's hard. You know, I wouldn't want to try things, but not like, you know, in, in coding, you have to sit in front of your screen for two, three hours because something doesn't work and just try and figure it out. You mentioned before you had a hard time taking other people's criticisms about how you should do things, about how you thought you were right. And it was just like a pity party about you and like this sucks and I don't want to be here and I hate this. And then you were like, you know what, maybe I should actually start taking some action. What was that like? It was tough at first, you know, we all react when someone tells you something, we all react with a comeback right away. We're like, no, oh, you're the dumb one, right? Did some self-reflection, realized where I'm going wrong, mainly that I'm not putting in any work and I'm expecting results. And then I started to change that slowly. It definitely, it takes some time to so those who are in that position. It's not gonna happen overnight. Kind of one question, but two questions. What was your most difficult moment? What was your greatest achievement that you think that you had? Most difficult moment was when I was learning at home, when I was doing self-taught, not having anyone to talk to. I didn't even know what Stack Overflow was. I was just, I spent a week trying to figure out some CSS because I just made a spelling mistake, but things like that, just not having someone to talk to. And my greatest achievement, I would say, is uh, my midterm project. I remember uh, I spent eight hours sitting down just to figure out that the body parser was affecting my app. So being able, being, having the determination to sit there for eight hours and try and figure something out was really when I realized that I see change. Tell me a little bit about that demo day that you had. And this is where you've gotten the majority of your, your job offers. You did have some phone interviews from applying to actual jobs, but tell us about that last demo day. And you told me you were like competing against another team and like. Yeah, so our, our demo day is after the 10, 11 weeks of bootcamp. We, on the last two weeks, we have 10 days to build an app from whatever stack we want. So we said, all right, What's something we didn't do? What's something that, you know, we want to show that in 10 days we can go learn something and right away implement it. So we said, we'll use React Native. So we had that. Um, so in the, we made that after 10 days, we get to this demo day and we present with uh, other people in front of employers. So we had three groups, each one went one after another and we presented. And uh, for the story of us competing, we had a company call six of us in and they're like, hey, just present your projects to their engineering teams, all casual. And then after they emailed us the next day and they were like, hey, we're picking group one, not group two. Which is really funny because we had no clue that they were just gonna put us up against each other. Two of them already had jobs. On the other team, one. right? Yeah, so they, right after they emailed us, sorry, they emailed us back like, hey, can you come work for us? How big was your cohort? How many other people didn't even like we get jobs? We were a big one. I think right now we're about five of us out of 10. We're in the Montreal location. They also have a Toronto one, which is a lot bigger. And you said it was 5K. I know it's kind of off topic, but it was 5K, six days a week, and then three months in person. Yeah, five, 5K US. Yeah, it's five days a week. The sixth is optional if you want help. So there's a mentor that comes in on Saturdays and you can sit there all day with them if you need to. So those who are really good and advanced don't need to, but I came in because I needed help, which is really nice because you get pretty much a one-to-one. -one. Uh, you just you, you just had an interview yesterday for the job that you're going to accept for for sixty, and that was for the company that emailed you back like, oh hey, the other people had jobs, you guys come work for us instead. Like, what was that interview process like? They showed us their office and they said we we're going to hire you guys to work on a project that we've never done before, like something pretty totally typical. different. Yeah, yeah. So we're pretty much going to try something, and if it doesn't work, they'll throw it out. You know, they're just trying to train us right now. You went for JavaScript, Rails, you did React Native, and you did regular React. Uh, but this job is totally different. Now you got to do C Sharp. C Sharp done it on the back end. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be using Redux, which I haven't done yet, but I, I think I'll be fine. They're going to be using React, which we've done. I don't know if I'll keep this in video, but my advice to you, keep applying. Have something yeah. in your back pocket because that's what I got hired on for and that project fell through and their funding fell through and they said, oh, sorry about that, bye. Me and another dude got hired just like you and a couple mm -hmm. of dudes got hired. Same time, same pay, same project. But they kept the other dude because he needed insurance and he had di diabetes. They knew I was a single dude, no kids, no family or anything like that. So they're like, sorry, Josh. Yeah, we don't have any money because uh, this deal 